Oh, my spawn! With a new... Hello, funny people inside of my computer. Hello. Congrats on first beanie. Hi, Judge. Hi, Zach. Hi, Ventus. Hello. Hello, Jen. Oh, oh my, my spoon. spoon. I love to hear it, bro. Love to hear it. Time to play a more funny game. And this time, we'll not have any issues for sure because the game is capped at 60 frames. <sighs> Literally, the moment I hit 1k, I lose my spoon. Oh no. Not your spoon. Uh, where are we going? This way. Science log, Chief Science Officer Dr. Kine reporting. My controller is plugged in. The colony's problems concern me greatly. There we go. I have no doubt they are somehow linked to the discovery of the marker, but the exact nature of that connection is still uh, unknown. Do we have a shot? Almost 40% of the colonists here? are experiencing a form of dementia. Of... The obvious symptoms are acute depression, insomnia, and hallucination. Incidents of violence and even murder also indicate extreme paranoia. 
Dr. Mercer has advised that I bring some of the affected on board for study. Focus to Dead Space Dr. logo. Dr. Weller, the planet side psychiatrist, has reported that his own analysis has been fruitless. I'm hesitant to rely on Dr. Mercer at this point, but I need his expertise. We need solutions, and we need them quickly. We have no power nodes. We have tanky credits, we can buy one more. Or even the next upgrade for our armor, that is a thing. What difficulty? We are on the... on hard, because you can't play on the harder difficulty. You can, you can all, that's the hardest that we can play first playthrough. Oh wait, hello new, good morning. He's fast! Hold up, y'all. I'm gonna reload. He's still gaming. What the hell? Go away. Clinging ass. We drop, we just drop ammo. And just drop ammo. Good. Thank God. I'll start accessing the captain's records right now. Head to the tram station and I'll contact you there. I'm going to find out what the hell happened to this ship. Can we top off for those? <laughs> Help. Oh my God, I'm a woman and I don't know how to read. Stop giving me shit to read! Good morning, you. Finally found a secondary Mon Hunt I like. Oh, I main gun lands and secondary sword and shield. I was playing Monster Hunter <coughs> with one of my um, old friends. I was playing a meme build on sword and shield and it was actually a banger. Uh, the wide range um speed eating very fun build aren't you interesting though Got me blue tackies. Blue tackies. Really, so much fun. I've been learning how to use wide shelling combos on gun lance. Ooh. Damn, you don't just downward smash into a. Somehow, one of them found a way down to the captain's nest. Like bursting everything and then wyvern blast and then reload and repeat. That's crazy. Lift Couldn't be me. Locked down now. I found the deck logs. Whatever is happening around here, it came from the planet when they cracked it open. It spread to the colony and reached the ship. Isaac, this isn't an infection. It's some form of alien life. <laughs> Shit, we've got bigger problems. The ship's engines are offline and our orbit is decaying. Get over to the engineering deck ASAP while I stay here and figure out what the problem is. Oh, speaking of store. Okay, things to sell. You. Already have level 2 suit. 
Did we buy the flame tomer? I think we buy the flame tomer. I'm gonna try the flame tomer. What the bean? The line. Wait, new item? In the star? Eh. Oh, no new item. So I did the complete opposite of boom, boom, reload, boom, boom, reload, and repeat until done. Understandable. I think we go for the lion gun. Uh, and I'll take a large med pack. The top off. Am I missing three bars or am I missing two bars? I was missing two bars. Damn! Damn! The fuck is that? Okay. Does this also- I think this uses the same ammo, no? No, oh, it uses its own ammo. Interesting. Are we going here? We are going here. I'm curious to see. Oh no, you said that the chapter names are spoilers, huh? Damn. How many chapters are there, Zach? In uh in the first dead space. How far are we in? Two problems, and we're working on borrowed time here. First, there's no fuel in the engines. Second, the gravity center is off the line, which means there's a couple of trillion tons of rock pulling us down. I need you to get that centrifuge well, operational. Well, God we the damn! Fire it up so I can stabilize the ship's orbit. God damn! Here's the fucking hoping that we can finish in time. Wouldn't mind playing it in November either, but you know. Would be nice to finish all the spooky games in a... Uh, in this spooky month. Oh, these are the line racks. I sold those, lol. I'm sorry about this one. Uh, what are you sorry about? Personal log. Acting Chief Engineer Jacob Temple. It's been two days since they pulled that planet open, since my captain died. The panic, the riots, they were nothing compared with what came after. Our friends, our co-workers started coming back. Changed. Coming back to kill us, drag us away. Rucker disappeared this morning, and I have to. I will do that, there. Judge. But to crack. I'm trying I'll to do it on Saturday. Right now I have bigger problems. I'll let you know that right now. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna, gonna, gonna reach the fuel subject my collab to uh the to, to British Zomboid. No, I will not do that. I should put that that like. It doesn't work with it, it, it doesn't count for collabs. Oh shit! This shit kind of goes hard. Ah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, British Dead Space and spooky readings will be a thing. What in hell is going on here? Oh, Danvers, oh, Henderson, he's crazy. 
pulling his own teeth out. And your son, for God's sake. Oh, God. Is he dead? Relax. Average Shimura viewer pulling their teeth out. He hit that door pretty hard. Man, why would he do something like that? I don't get it. I don't understand the spook in this game. It's just oh, 14 whispered, man. It's just Shimura viewers in their natural habitat. Just casually ripping their teeth out, you know, as you do. Speed is what? Fire rate? Uh, I don't really care that much about fire rate. Having extra magazine size does sound nice though. Yeah, it's gonna go a long way. I think we save, um... I can definitely keep the line gun, but I think we save it for like... Uh... later encounters, you know? Just thought that I need more, more oomph. That's cool. I'm, a, I'm exploring. Line gun's perfect for crowd control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking, like, either if, like, later on in the game that we meet, like, super fucking tanky necromorphs or some shit. Or if there's, like, a lot of them. And we could just use the. Oh, plasma cutter for. Or. Or run of the mill boys. You died kind of fast. This game is a fucking classic. Yeah, it's so classic that the port barely works, bro. Pinky Necros, uh, maybe. Nah, what clueless emoji? Talking about. Uh, we go on the gondola, right? Okay, I wanna go check this place out first. Oh! Never mind. Oh, I see. I guess we come back here afterwards. Surely nothing's going to drop out from the tram and like like over here and like try to attack me. Nah, 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 nah. The game would never do that. It would never.
kill the real fucker. I'm kind of looking a little... Oh, I'm banged up here. There you go. Two shots. Could have gone better. Could have gone worse. Shut it, Danvers. Shut it again. Engineering log. Temple reporting. Someone has shut off the fuel lines to the primary engine and uh, damaged the valves in the process. Uh, they need to be repaired before I can reopen them, but we're running out of time. With the engine offline, orbit decay will begin in less than ten hours. I just can't understand who would do this. If it's one of those crazy unitologist bastards, I'll break their neck. They said they were coming. We never should have let them live. Shut up, Danvers! Help me with the tools. Temple out. Tell me you're all done, bro. A single bait. Deliveries for the Yu-Gi-Oh cards I got are coming in Friday and Saturday, which is great because they told me 12 to 15 weeks. It's only been four days. That's a that's a little bit of an improvement. Yeah, that's that's good to hear. Ripper. The fuck. Working, Isaac. I have a few reading. It's only a quarter full, but that's Ripper. enough to restore orbit once you bring the engine to life. I barely knew it. False alarm. Call it Okay, I need a better vantage. I like the funny little sounds the machine made. Wonder if the remake will change the small range ones like I did in Dead Space 3. Maybe. To no longer look like small children? Now what's wrong with that, bro? Surely nothing's going to drop on me. Oh. Only time will tell. Boy, what the hell, boy? We do not have any healing, guys. I only saw some gameplay from the Mon Hunt clone. Wild Hunt actually doesn't look awful. Better have a good fucking monster designs. Thought I heard an item.
What's up, bruh? Oh, it's gonna make me go there. But not yet. Need someone to do that for me for real. <laughs> for real, bro. Need somebody to pin me down and stick something down my throat. For real, for real. Is that what I come back to? What are you talking about, you? Yeah? These enemies are giving me trust issues. Flame Fuel Ripper. Remote industrial saw. Let's see, but close range doesn't sound too good. I don't know if I want close range. Just take what we got. Go over there. Okay. Quick little funny save. To be fair, how many times have you had three zombies rush you and you couldn't kill them in time? True, but we have this now. So, like, it's not that big of an issue for numbers. But you can shoot those blades in this dead space. She like you. She like you. Got it. Okay, and space bar just shoots it. Interesting. This is Temple. Now the centrifuge is offline. We've got four trillion tons of rock hanging off our ass, and without that centrifuge to balance the ship, the gravity tethers will pull us straight down to the colony. I'm heading in there now to see if I can fix it. My goodness. Okay, well, what have we got? Interesting, interesting. I think we will be going with this and we can like run it through here around to here and then like that slightly. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. She like I like the bunny chainsaw. Surely nothing will go wrong here. Plump Litigious Durian Velociraptor. <laughs> Ow! Sir, I'm trying to saw you to pieces. Anyone wants it, the Warhammer XCOM game? Like, and I guess it's free on Epic Games until the third. Free games, man. Epic honestly fucking pops off with that shit. The one thing I like about the Epic Store, the one thing I really use it for is free games. Yeah, that's fucking so many, dude. gravity sections. I guess they're okay. Entering zero gravity. Hmm. Yeah. His head was spinning. Oh, my out? Fuck me, dude. Uh. 
don't care. Gravity sections are so much better in two because you just kind of free float. That sounds nice. That do be sounding nice. Why the scary music? Oh, hi! Let's go back now. Where go? What I do? Okay, I need to just go back up. They're okay. These these are. Okay to deal with. I played a little bit of Prey 2016, like very little. Um, I did not like the uh, this the anti graph in that game. This game is this game is not as bad. Hundred percent and stabilized. Now get out of there and focus on the engine. I don't know how much time we have left. This game sucks. This game sucks. I hate this game. First death! First death chat! First death! Love how the head just keep rolling. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. You're doing great, Isaac. Centrifuge and gyros are both 100% and stabilized. Now get out of there and focus on the engine. Get her a lot of go one more time. time we have left. Can we slow it? Oh. That would be too easy. Fuck off, gamer. Fuck off. Yeah. Or stop, just to be sure. Hello, Zar. Hello. I hope we're going the right way. I am. Sick. Let me in. I'm gonna give you more saw blades. How cute. Exiting vacuum. Okay, next time we go to the store, I need more <sighs> cutter ammo. Am I able to telekinesis the arm arm blades off of dead enemies to use for like a do? I don't think so. What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? Oh, this is... This ain't it, chat. Chat, this ain't it. 
Oh, Sinu! Living the dream. How about I just like bait it? Fuck! He's cheating, Chad! Try that actually. Might be able to slow it. Time for the infinite death save. Okay, guys, so that was. You cannot slow it, chat. Was about to be like, all right, chat. So that was Dead Space One. It was a good experience. I did like it. It was pretty good. Rest in peace, stream. Stream, do be stream is dead, guys. Stream did DC, guys. Thank you, OBS. I do appreciate that. Do very much appreciate when OBS just decides to go to sleep midstream. That is kind of what it's here for. Just wouldn't be the same. I would stick my dick in that. Hello, stream. Hold it with the title was one of the most, if not the most, challenging thing for the devs to make in the same as a whole video on it and everything. Ooh. Say it's a video essay, a long form video. Okay, no more enemy encounters, please. What did I just say? What did I just say? Oh. A left click a second time does not actually uh, call it back. The flesh wallacy. Mmm. Delicious. More damage on the cutter. With chat. All I'm saying is that I know you would too. It looked pretty wet, dude. Honestly. Isaac, can you hear me? It's Kendra. They attacked me. I ran for it, and Hammond just—he just disappeared. Kendra, where are you? Nice to see you're alive and well, Hammond. I barricaded myself in the computer core. I can hear them moving outside, but. I don't think they know I'm in here. I can log into everything from here. I hacked the route and found some reports from the colony. Even before they crashed the planet, the colonists were experiencing widespread dementia. It seems to be related to- the No! They were listening to the album! Marker. I'll keep looking. I've got your location and I'm going to unlock the door to fuel storage. You can get to the engine chamber from there. I don't actually-
actually know if I like the river that much. But I guess we're kind of stuck with it because I didn't add some stuff. Dead Space 3 got a lot wrong, but the concept of basically duct taping gun barrels together to make a new gun is cool. Yeah, that does sound sick. <sighs> I remember playing a little bit of 3 with my friend. Yep, not finishing it. It was an... It was a game. Variable gravity. Oh. Never beat this one though, I just couldn't. Yeah, it was kinda. Entering zero gravity. It was something, that's for sure. Oh. published by EA and has a 3 in it, it's probably going to be bad, like Mass Effect 3. Never played Mass Effect 3, so I would not know. Never played the Mass Effect series. Exiting. What'd you say? What? Huh? Holy god, that is awful, dude. was fine with the multiple endings which were actually all the same but in a different color light that does thing uh that sound kind of kind of weird champ but isn't isn't a mass effect game the aren't the mass effect games the funny the funny alien fucker games Games were made for me, bro. Should play them. Why does this whole area just look like scorn moment? Three, look, there it is. Dead Space Three. Mass Effect 2 is the most fun alien sex game. Alien sex game has some weird fucking story to it, bro. That's Space 3! Look, there it is! Can't believe they foreshadowed Dead Space 3 in the first Dead Space game. So ambitious. Well, no. Scorn moment. Yeah. 
Who cares about story when you can romance a blue alien milf? Damn, true, man. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. He did do a little bit of a hop, though. He do be kind of hopping. Look, Dead Space 2! They even... This game was so ambitious. I can't believe they foreshadowed both Dead Space 2 and 3 in this game. What an amazing game. Truly one of the most ambitious titles of last century. You know, of, of last decade, Jesus fucking Christ, last century, by the way. This game is ported like it was last century, TBH. I think we do. Money. Ripper blades. I mean, we basically have enough to buy another one anyway, right? Yeah. Not really losing out on much. My bad, G. My bad, G. That's my bad, G. Imported like it was being made when George Washington was crossing the crossing the Delaware for real. Oh wait, yeah, we just we just wait. Patience. Squirm. Why don't you t telekinesis and throw the boom boom? You absolutely right, bro. The, the, like, the telekinesis honestly just goes through my fucking brain. Just forget that I have it. I just use my fucking free health. Fuck. Why do you give me a quick heal button? That's so bad for my brain, because I see I, I take damage and I'm like, heal. Oh shit, he just lobbed that boy. Hello? 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 He kinda thick! You throw these? You do throw these. Gold semiconductor. Kinda. Kinda got. Kinda thicky. 
Don't look, my model model is looking at you. I bet when that boy walks down the stairs, it sounds like. You can make that jump, bro. You are in a fucking giant, like, you're, you're in a spacesuit, bro. It's not gonna hurt you. Promise you. Wait, Half-Life moment? Life, Half-Life moment? Half-Life moment? Half-Life moment? Bro got the fist gun. Finishing sequence initiated. Please stand by. It doesn't work, chat. Chat, it don't work. Chat, it don't work. It don't work, chat. Chat, it don't work. You lied to me. You can't lie on the internet. What? This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. What the fuck was that sound? Ew! Ew! Ew, it's like. Oh, it's coming on me, bruh. Average viewers right there. True. True. Wait, what about this? Is this a foot? There's a claw. What'd you say? Holy fuck, any louder please, I can't hear. It's working. We're online and functional. Finally some good news. Get a transfer to bridge, Isaac. I'm gonna take us back into a gym station. Wait, wait, we're not safe yet. Ship's asteroid defense system is offline. On the way up? The ship's going to pass through a debris field thrown up from the planet crack. We'll be ripped to pieces unless you restart it. God damn it! I'll start working on it from here. Isaac, meet me at the bridge. You can do more good here than I can. Isaac this. Isaac that. 
Why don't you go sicko mode on a fucking girl? On some bitches! That's bait. That's bait, bro. Baitiest bait I've ever heard in my life. Might be on with something, chat. If it's one thing she knows is bait. She's the master of bait, exactly. One would say I am the master baiter, even. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Guys, I am the master baiter. It's kind of what I do. Now that we have more cap, what are we at? 14? Um, I'm gonna save the rest of our power nodes for more health. That was three, right? Need three. Licenses for the master baiters. Exactly. Okay, some of these chapters are kind of burning through fast, so. Alright, this is multiple tests in a four page essay. Exactly, exactly. Isaac, come in. Kendra's right. The ADS is completely shot. I'll need your help to fix this. The ADS? Dang. Kendra, Aim down sights? See if you can get to the ship's reports. It sounds like you have better access from there. When were you going to tell us about the artifact, Hammond? This marker? I don't know anything about that. It's referenced in the captain's records. They brought it up from the planet. It's on the ship? In cargo. They think it's of alien origin, but I don't know what the hell it is. Really? CEC didn't know anything about it. You're lying. Back off! I am not the bad guy here. We're all shaky right now. You're gonna have to trust that I don't know anything about it. <laughs> We've entered the debris field. Get to the captain's nest. I'll explain everything later. Come on down. They give a hands-on demonstration of your ability to be a masturbator. Just play a game of CSGO with me, bro. Damn, you kinda... Fuck, dude, I get desperate too, but like, come on, man, through glass? That shit, that shit gonna get lodged somewhere. Here. 
Straight to the CSGO, huh? Yes, sir. Bro, okay. I had a teammate in CSGO today who had their Twitter and their Steam bio. And, and she had a fucking... She had an OnlyFans, bro. She bought him frag, but that's okay, because her ass is fat. We're gonna keep these ads coming, for real. Look, I don't have control over them, my friend. Guys, ads is how I make some money. Oh. I mean, the OnlyFans thing? Level 3, so... Gotta get that name out there for real, bro. Hey, man. Isaac. Damn, you scared me. The place is making me jumpy. Fucking asteroids coming through the roof. Respect the drip. I mean, respect Look, the bag, bro. I know Kendra doesn't trust me, but... I don't know anything about a marker or anything else. This is supposed to be a repair mission. Plain and simple. Pew, 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 pew. This mess is the asteroid defense system. I can fix these boards when the main power routing is shot. You're gonna have to reroute them manually through at least three junction boxes to activate the primary cannon. Oh, but first, you need to activate the atrium elevators from bridge security. You can use them to get to the junction boxes. Okay. By the way, Isaac, be careful. I saw something out there. I don't know what. I only got a glimpse. It was big. Really big. That is CTTV names and games. Let's just see. Only, oh, only fans slash name for real. Dead when I sealed the pod. These things don't die easily. She didn't have a fat ass though. Whatever puts food on the table, I guess. You know? She bought him frag because she got too heavy of a bottom, bro. For real. <laughs> Smart, not gonna lie. It is! <gasps> oh, what the fuck is that? What is that? What? What the hell? What is that? Oh, no, 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 Shoot him in the dick! Uh, okay, camera. I don't have any stasis!
Oh my god, he gently nudged me. fall over like that bro it's kind of cute guys i give him a little pat on the head i like him he he kind of cute Isaac, make us whole again holy shit she's horny She said, check this hole again, bro. This is mutiny. You'll all be tried for mutiny. Kind, make them listen to reason. Settle down, then. <laughs> Hold him. <laughs> By maritime law, Article 5469. That's what she said. That is what she said, bro. Captain Benjamin Mathias, unfit for duty. The mark must be delivered to the church. Terence, please. I'm sorry, Ben, but I can't let you do this. Traitor. Heretic. Hold his head. Murderer! Hold him. I'll just be seeing stars for a little bit, guys. I think he's fine. If not, he'll look like Wilson from uh, Utopia. He'll just have a really cool eye patch, bro. Contact me. Oh yeah? Gravity plating is malfunctioning. Keep an eye out for any kind of distortion effect coming from the floor. It could be dangerous. See. Gotta do a little flip. Don't wanna show off. Poor guy. I. That's like when like a look when you're like a little kid, and you're like, Mom, Mom, look, I'm the 
did this thing. Look, I can do this thing. And then your mom's just like, sure thing, sweetie. Not even looking at you. Oh, come here. Ow. Thank you for the hundred bits, we kid. Face, bro. Ow. A test of your reflexes. Almost. 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 That shit almost got me. Almost. the try and I never get caught lacking bro I heard the fucking endwalker music and I was like wait a minute I'm not playing 14 why are there cracks on the floor oh I'm running low on ammo huh fuck okay let's try using other guns hey okay 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 Do you think he gives good money if we kill him, chat? I'm not trying to kill him. Gotta give at least three videos. I want that tree fitty, bro. I bet he give you McNuggies. <laughs> Ew! Worth. Just gotta be a little bit more cautious. Oh, 
Although when they die, they just become weightless and floppy. Yeah. They signed out. some water. <sighs> We're going back already. Oh my throat. Oh my throat hurting today. Horsey. Okay. Okay, they are kind of sick nasty with it, not gonna lie. Could have gone worse. Uh, three, I guess. Creeper's pretty good against those guys. Yeah, yeah, they fucking they get their ass eaten by this. He's ass like they bought a bracket to see us go for real. They stay bottom fragging, bro. Okay, prime me 
castigation power has been rerouted. Look, I don't know about you, but I think I'm seeing things. My head's pounding still. I don't know. Just stay sharp, okay? I'm seeing things too. Does this game have whispers in it? Am I am I going crazy? I feel like I'm going crazy, chat. Yes and yes. Yeah. to level one. Isaac, listen up. I've gone over the MedSci reports. These things are bio recombinators. They take dead oh, tissue, fuck. absorb it, and mold it into new forms. Y'all got that for free. One iteration seems to have the sole purpose of infecting corpses. The others, well, seem to be making corpses to infect. And that body tissue we keep seeing on the walls is part of it too. I found a report that says it's a habitat changer. Oh boy, I wonder why they're giving us a save station, Clueless Elegy? Got fingy pops for free, stay when in chat for real. Sometimes I forget that these things are rewards. See you. Two. Fuck. Well, I did say we were gonna go for hell. Whenever we get our third one, we'll have our health upgrade. Oh, die! I made a sign just for you. A throuple sign outside that door. True! Every copy of Dead Space is personally made for the player. Sounds like a head crab zombie, bruh. <clears throat> Bro has the brains of a head crab zombie, too.
surely nothing will go bad. Asteroid defense system now online. All right, we've got enough power, but the ADS cannon's auto targeting is down. I think it's a faulty data cable. I need you to aim the cannon manually to replace it. Take the elevator the to the top of the ship and head for the cannon. It's, it's... Let it do its thing, okay? Oh! Come on, Isaac. A test of your reflexes! Ah! Ah! Caught me. You got me. He ripped that guy's dick off! Hell yeah, bro. You got me. That time I was uh, a little, a little invested. Funny for you, I do not have a power node. Hee <laughs> hee That's a lot of words. But I ain't reading them. There's our fucking power node. Okay, but we have enough to buy one, right? Yeah, we have enough to buy one. But we are gonna be getting the suit upgrade soon. No. We'll get the money for it inside. For sure. For sure. I'm not coping, guys. I'm not coping. Where to you'll not coping. Holy loot. I would say that's worth. We will most likely have enough, right? Ooh, especially if there's another storage room right here. Yo. Yeah, we definitely have enough. Almost 30k. What is that, like 26? 27? 26? Yeah, 26 and a half. For sure, bro. Worth stalling a little bit longer for that, because at least I can buy the last upgrade. For, I mean, the upgrade for the armor, and then I can get a power node for health. The same time, the same store. You know, whenever we get that. Do I have to go back? 
No. At least we get to save. Two more yawns for two, two, two. Two, two, two. Oh? What? Is, is three up? Is one not the lowest? I mean, the highest? I was thinking in terms of we are already on the second floor, right? And then the third floor would be the lower floor. And then the first floor would be the highest floor. That is not the way. Three is the highest, yeah. Store here, right? So I see, yeah, because these doors were locked earlier. This game needs to stop giving me whispers in my fucking ear. Didn't want to piss myself in a not cute way. Stop. moves kind of moving Isaac you're going to have to cross the ship exterior to reach the ADS cannon problem is we're still getting bombarded by asteroids look for cover or you'll get torn to pieces I love that the elevators are always safe in this game smile Smile. Entering vacuum. Question. Will this auto use? Entering zero gravity. Warning. Multiple impacts detected across the starboard hull. Game sucks. Played dodgeball against a big space rock. No, I can't say that I have. Entering vacuum. Entering zero gravity. Warning. Multiple impacts detected across the starboard hull. Is that what I have to do? That kind of makes sense. What the hell? Oh. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Across the starboard 
bro really just missed. What's that? Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. He started with zero deaths today. Hey, I've only died like three times, okay? I'm not gonna create that actually. Three to anime tentacles and two to space rock dodgeball. Really? We died three times? No, we died two times to the tentacle. <clears throat> how strong my punch is. Baby, bro. Such a baby. Bro's out here. <laughs> Shut up, bro. Not that serious. It's just a game. This, this is a 2010s game. Come. The turret sections. Okay, this. We are okay, this. We are okay, this. Okay, this. Nice shooting, Isaac. Auto targeting is now online and clearing a path to safe orbit. As soon as we're clear, I'll engage the autopilot again. Head to the tram station, and I'll meet you there when I'm done. All right. 
That was the worst part for me. I can fucking imagine, dude. Barely made that. Surely there will not be more enemies. Give a little way when you flew up. Surely we are fine. Surely there are no more enemies ahead of us. We will just have a safe trip back. Okay, I'm gonna grab that just so he shuts up. Such a baby, bro. Literally has never been choked in his life. You're not gonna believe this. Oxygen levels are falling. Something's poisoning hydroponics air production, and whatever it is, it's filling the deck up with that organic stuff. We're not gonna huh? have any air to breathe soon. But if I understand these lab reports correctly, I think I can make a poison to destroy it. Head to medical. It should have everything you need. Will this never end? Isaac, get to medical and mix together whatever Kendra's come up with. I'm heading to hydroponics. If I can slow it down, that might keep us breathing long enough to fight it. Hey, fingy pop again. What the hell? Ah, oh, bro, that's nasty. Fucking nasty, man. Whisper again, bro. I swear to God. I'm gonna fucking rip your tongue out from your ass. Stop it with that whispering shit, fucking weirdo. Shop. Level three soon. Contact me. Force gun. <clears throat> Short range kinetic booster device. Heavy damage energy projector. Suit. I'm gonna get one upgrade. No, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna get one upgrade, and then we'll get the um. I want to get the the force projector. That sounds cool. If we have enough money after that. He kind of drippy with it. One of you. 
No, we do have enough. And we have enough for some more, uh, plasma energy. We don't need that many river blades. We'll get some of mine rocks as well. Cool. Don't care. Don't care. Uh, we'll get more line racks. Don't care. This is my setup. I like this setup. Seems weak for having to charge it. Yeah. It's my gripe with it. Cool. Kinda sucks though. <sighs> we are just about halfway. Okay. I think we're gonna pause it there. I can save is hella fucking fast, holy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright. We gon' we gonna do a quick break. And when we return, I will have John Spooky, y'all save it. And I'll think about what we're going to be reading. I don't know what we're going to be reading today, so well, we'll see. I'm just off to bed. Have fun with your masturbated shenanigans. Yeah, 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 I got you. Have a good night, Zach. Thank you for stopping by. All right. Uh, let me get y'all some good old AFK music. Hey, there we go. Okay, I will see y'all in a bit. Get your snacks, get comfy, and when I return, we shall be reading some spooky.
Hello, chat. Hello. Hello, my friends. Hello, hello. Airbnb screen is so cute. And I love it so much, dude. It's so good. But yes, hello, chat. Hello. Hello, hello. Let me... Who's friendly in the corner over there? That is... That is John Spooky. Maybe Lurkin and I shall continue. Have a good look, Queenie. Have a good look. Also, hello, hello, Oscar. Hello, hello. So we have a short lineup today. Um... I am not going to be reading all of the second one, because much like uh, NES Godzilla, it is very long. Um... So I will be probably reading maybe like a third or so of it on today. And then I will finish it on Saturday. And then on Saturday, I think we are just going to be reading that one. And then maybe a short one if I can find one. Uh, but as for right now, We are going to be starting with, finally, 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 Jeff the Killer. Another... Not so good creepypasta. We've been reading a lot of really good ones, right? Like we just finished, um, what's it called? Russian Sleep Experiment last time. So it, it, we're, we're overdue. For some garbage, you know. And it, it, it is like one of the faces of creepypasta, so I guess we gotta read it. Uh, and after Jeff the Killer, I wanna read again a little bit of 1999, which is another one of my favorites. Um, but and unfortunately, both of my favorite creepypastas of all time are fucking long as shit, so. We'll, we'll see how much we get through tonight. We shall be starting with Jeff the Killer. Jeff and his family had just moved into a new neighborhood. His dad had gotten a promotion at work, and they thought it would be best to live in one of those fancy neighborhoods. Jeff and his brother, brother Liu couldn't complain, though. A new, better house. What was not to love? As they were getting unpacked, one of their neighbors came by. Hello, she said. I'm Barbara. I live across the street from you. Well, I just wanted to introduce myself and introduce my son. She turns around and calls her son over. Billy, these are our new neighbors. Billy says hi and ran back to play in his yard. Well, said Jeff's mom, I'm Margaret and this is my husband Peter and my two sons, Jeff and Leo. They both introduced themselves, and then Barbara invited them to their son's birthday. Jeff and his brother were about to object when their mother said that they would love to. When Jeff and his family are done packing, Jeff went up to his mom. Mom, why would you invite us to some kid's party? If you haven't noticed, I'm not some dumb kid. Jeff, said his mother, we just moved here. We should show that we want to spend time with our neighbors. Now, we're going to that party, and that's final. Jeff started to talk, but he stopped himself, knowing that he couldn't do anything. Whenever his mother said anything, it was final. He walked up to his room and plopped down on his bed. He sat there, looking at his ceiling, when suddenly, he got a weird feeling. Not so much a pain, but a weird feeling. Ripstream, it's okay. Vod watchers be eating good tonight. He dismissed it as just some random feeling. He heard his mother call him down to get his stuff, 
We walked down together. The next day, Jeff walked down the stairs to get breakfast and get ready for school. As he sat there, eating his breakfast, he once again got that feeling. As he and Liu finished breakfast, they walked down to the bus stop. They sat there waiting for the bus, and then all of a sudden, some kid on a skateboard jumped over them, only inches above their laps. They both jumped back in surprise. Hey, what the hell? The kid landed and turned back to them. He kicked his skateboard up and caught it with his hands. The kid seemed to be about 12, one year younger than Jeff. He wears an aeropostal shirt and ripped blue jeans. Well, well, well. Looks like we've got some new meat. Suddenly, two other kids appeared. One was super skinny, and the other was huge. Well, since you're new here, I'd like to introduce ourselves. Over there is Keith. Jeff and Leo look over at the skinny kid. He had a dopey face that you would expect a sidekick to have. And he's Troy. They looked over at the fat kid. Talk about a tub of lard. The kid looked like he had an exercise since he was crawling. I, said the first kid, am Randy. Now, for all the kids in this neighborhood, there is a small price for bus fare if you catch my drift. Leo stood up, ready to punch the lights out of the kid's eyes when one of his friends pulled the knife on him. I'd have hoped you would have been more cooperative, but it seems to me to do this the hard way. The kid walked up to Leo and took his wallet out of his pocket. Jeff got that feeling again. Now it was truly strong, a burning sensation. He stood up, but Liu gestured him down. Jeff ignored him and walked up to the kid. Listen here, you little punk. Give me my bro's wallet, or else. Then he put the wallet in his pocket and pulled out his own knife. Oh, then what will you do? Just as he finished the sentence, Jeff popped the kid in the nose. As Randy reached for his face, Jeff grabbed the kid's wrist and broke it. Squid! Hi, Squid! Hello, Squid. Bot, are you awake? I don't think the bot's awake. I think everything is just dying tonight. We'll do it. We'll try it one more time. Come on. I believe in you. There we go. There we go. How am I? I am good. How is Resident Evil, Squid? We are, we are reading... Garbage. Jump the killer. Randy screamed, and Jeff grabbed the knife from his hand. Troy and Keith rushed Jeff, but Jeff was too quick. He threw Randy to the ground. Keith lashed out at Jeff, but he ducked and stabbed him in the arm. Keith dropped his knife and fell to the ground, screaming. Troy rushed him too, but Jeff didn't even need the knife. He just punched Troy straight in the stomach and Troy went down. As he fell, he puked all over. Leo could do nothing but look at him, but look in amazement at Jeff. Jeff, how did you... That was all he said. They saw the bus coming and knew that they'd be blamed for the whole, for the whole thing. So they started running as fast as they could. As they ran, they looked back and saw the bus driver rushing over to Randy and the others. As Jeff and Liu made it to school, they didn't dare tell what happened. They, all they did was sit and listen. Liu just thought of that, just thought of that as his brother beating up a few kids, but Jeff knew it was more. Something scary. As he got that feeling, he felt how powerful it was, the urge to just hurt someone. He didn't like how it sounded, but he couldn't help feeling happy. He felt that strange feeling go away and stay away for the entire day of school. Even as he walked home through the whole thing near the bus stop, and how now he probably wouldn't take the bus anymore, he felt happy. He got his when he got home, his parents asked how his day was, and he said, 
in a somewhat ominous voice. It was a wonderful day. Next morning, he heard a knock at his front door. He walked down to find two police officers at, his, at the door, his mother looking back at him with an angry look. Jeff, these officers tell me that you attacked three kids, that it wasn't regular fighting, and that they were stabbed. Stabbed, son. Jeff's gaze fell to the floor, showing his mother that it was true. Mom, they were the ones who pulled a knife on us. On me and Ryu. Son, said one of the cops. We found three kids, two stabbed, one having a bruise on his stomach, and we have witnesses proving that you fled the scene. Now, what does that tell us? Jeff knew it was no use. He could say that him and Liu had been attacked, but then there was no proof that it was them, not them who attacked first. They couldn't say that they were weren't fleeing, because truth be told, they were. So Jeff couldn't defend himself or Liu. Son, call down your brother. Jeff couldn't do it, since it was him who beat up all the kids. Sir, it... It was me. It was me. I was the one who beat up the kids. Leo tried to hold me back, but he couldn't stop me. Cough looked at his partner, and they both nod. Well, kid, looks like a year in juvie. Wait, says Leo. They all looked up to see him holding a knife. The officers pulled their guns and locked them on Leo. It was me. I beat up those little punks. I have the marks to prove it. He lifted his, up his sleeves to reveal cuts and bruises, as if he was in a struggle. Son, just put the knife down, said the officer. Liu held up the knife and dropped it to the ground. He put his hands up and walked to the cops. No, Leo, it was me. I did. Jeff had tears running down his face. Hmm. Poor bro, trying to take the blame for what I did. Well, take me away. The police led Liu out to the patrol car. Liu, tell them it was me. Tell them I was the one who beat up those kids. Jeff's mother put her hands on her shoulder. Jeff, please. You don't have to lie. We know it's Liu. You can stop. Jeff watched helplessly as the cop car speeds off with Liu inside. A few minutes later, Jeff's dad pulls into the driveway, seeing Jeff's face and knowing something was wrong. Son, son, what is it? Jeff couldn't answer. His vocal cords were strained from crying. Instead, Jeff's mother walked up his father inside to break the bad news to him as Jeff wept in the driveway. After an hour or so, Jeff walked back in the house, seeing that his parents were both shocked, sad, and disappointed. He couldn't look at them. He couldn't see how they thought of Leo when it was his fault. He just went to sleep, trying to get the whole thing off his mind. Two days went by with no word from Liu at GDC. No friends to hang out with. Nothing but sadness and guilt. That is until Saturday, when Jeff is woken by his mother with a happy, sunshiny face. Jeff, yeah, it's the day, she said. She opened up the curtains and let light flood into his room. What? What's what's today? Asked Jeff as he stares awake. Why, it's Billy's party. He was now fully awake. Mom, you're joking, right? You don't expect me to go to some kid's party after... There was a long pause. Jeff, we both know what happened. I think this party could be the thing that brightens up the past days. Now, get dressed. Jeff's mother walked out the room and downstairs to get ready herself. He fought himself to get up. He picked out a random shirt and a pair of jeans and walked downstairs. He saw his mother and father all dressed up, his mother in a dress and his father in a suit. He thought, 
Why would they ever such, wear such fancy clothes to a kid's birthday party? Son? Is that all you're gonna wear? Said Jeff's mom. Better than wearing too much, he said. His mother pushed down the feeling to yell at him and hit it with a smile. Now, Jeff, we may be over Jazz. But this is how you go if you want to make an impression, said his father. Jeff grunted and went back up to his room. I don't have any fancy clothes, he yelled downstairs. Just pick out something. He looked around his closet for what he would call fancy. He found a pair of black dress pants he had for special occasions and an undershirt. He couldn't find a shirt to go with it, though. He looked around and only found striped and patterned shirts, none of which to go with dress pants. Finally, he found a white hoodie and put it on. You're wearing that? They both said. His mother looked at her watch. Oh, no time to change. Let's just go. She said as she heard Jeff and her father out the door. They crossed the street over to Barbara and Billy's house. They knocked on the door, and at it appeared Bar that Barbara, just like his parents, were way overdressed. As they walked inside, all Jeff could see were adults, no kids. The kids are out in the yard. Jeff, how would you go meet some of them? said Barbara. Jeff walked outside to a yard full of kids. They were running around in weird co cowboy costumes and shooting each other with plastic guns. Might as well be standing in a Toys R Us. Suddenly, a kid came up to him and handed him a toy gun and a hat. Hey, want to play? He said. Ah, uh, no, Ken. I'm way too old for this stuff. The kid looked at him with that weird puppy dog face. Please, said the kid. Fine. Put on the hat and started to pretend to shoot at the kids. At first he thought it was totally ridiculous. Then he actually started to have fun. It might not have been super cool, but it was the first time he had done something that took his mind off of Leo. So we played with the kids for a while until we heard a noise. A weird rolling noise. Then it hit him. Andy, Troy, and Keith all jumped over the fence on their skateboards. Jeff dropped the fake gun and ripped off the hat. Randy looked at Jeff with a burning hatred. Hey, Jeff, is it? He said. We have some unfinished business. Jeff saw his bruised nose. I think we're even. I beat the crap out of all of you, and you get my brother sent to JDC. Randy got an evil look in his eyes. Oh no, I don't go for even, I go for winning. You may have kicked our asses that one day, but not today. As he said that, Randy rushed at Jeff. They both fell to the ground. Randy punched Jeff in the nose, and Jeff grabbed them by the ears and headbutt him. Jeff pushed Randy off of him and rose to his feet. Kids were screaming and parents were running out of the house. Troy and Keith both pulled guns out of their pockets. No one interrupts, or guts will fly, they said. Randy pulled a knife on Jeff and stabbed it into his shoulder. Jeff screamed and fell to his knees. Randy started kicking, in the kicking him in the face. After three kicks, Jeff grabs his foot and twists it, causing Randy to fall to the ground. Jeff stood up and walked towards the back door. Troy grabbed him. Need some help? He picks, he picks Jeff up by the back of his collar and throws him through the patio door. As Jeff tries to stand, he is kicked down to the ground. Randy repeatedly starts kicking Jeff until he starts to cough up blood. Come on, Jeff, fight me. He picks Jeff up and throws him into the kitchen. Randy sees a bottle of vodka on the, ground, on the counter and smashes the glass over Jeff's head. Come on, Jeff, look at me. Jeff glances, his face riddled with blood. I was the one who got your brother sent to JDC. And now you're just going to sit there and let him rot in there for a whole year. You should be ashamed. Jeff finally starts to get up. 
Oh, finally. We stand and fight. Jeff is now to his feet, blood and vodka on his face. Once again, he gets that strange feeling, the one he hasn't felt in a while. Finally, he's up, says Randy as he runs at Jeff. That's when it happens. Something inside Jeff snaps. But his psyche is destroyed, all rational thinking gone. All he can do is kill. He grabs Randy and pile drives him to the ground. He gets on top of him and punches him straight in the heart. The punch causes Randy's heart to stop. As Randy gasps for breath, Jeff hammers down on him. Punch after punch, blood gashes from Randy's body until he takes one final breath and dies. Everyone is looking at Jeff now. The parents, the kids, even Troy and Keith. Although they easily break from their gaze and point their guns at Jeff. Jeff sees the guns trained on him and runs for the stairs. As he runs, Troy and Keith let out fire on him, each shot missing. Jeff runs up the stairs. He hears them follow up behind. As they let out their final rounds of bullets, Jeff ducks into the bathroom, grabs the towel rack and rips it off the wall. Troy and Keith race in, knives ready. Troy swings his knife at Jeff, who backs away and bangs the towel rack into Joy's face. Troy goes down hard and now all there is left is Keith. He is more agile than Troy though and ducks when Jeff swings the towel rack. He drops the knife and grabs Jeff's and grabs neck Jeff by the neck. He pushed him into the wall. A thing of bleach fell down on the top on top of him from the top shelf. It burnt both of them and they both started to scream. Jeff wiped his eyes as best as he could. He pulled back the towel rack and swung it straight at Keith's head. As he lay there, bleeding to death, he let on an ominous smile. What's so funny? Asked Jeff. Keith pulled out a lighter and switched it on. What's funny, he said, is that you're covered in bleach and alcohol. Jeff's eyes widened as he as Keith threw the lighter at him. As soon as the flame made contact with him, the flames ignited the alcohol in the vodka. While the alcohol burned him, the bleach bleached his skin. Jeff let out a terrible screech as he caught on fire, tried to roll out the fire, but it was no use. The alcohol had made him a walking inferno. He ran down the hall and fell down the stairs. Everybody started screaming as soon as they saw Jeff, now a man on fire, dropped to the ground, nearly dead. The last thing Jeff saw was his mother and the other parents trying to extinguish the flame. That's when he passed out. When Jeff woke, he had a cast wrapped around his face. He couldn't see anything, but he felt the cast on his shoulder and stitches all over his body. He tried to stand up, but he realized there was some tube in his arm, and when he tried to get it out, when he tried to get up, it fell out and a nurse rushed in. I don't think he can get out of bed just yet, she said. She put him back in the bed and reinserted the tube. Jeff sat there with no vision. No idea of where his surroundings were, what his surroundings were. Finally, after hours, he heard his mother. Honey, are you okay? She asked. Jeff couldn't answer though. His face was covered and he was unable to speak. Oh honey, I have great news. After all the witnesses told the police that Randy confessed to trying to attack you, they decided to let Lee go. This almost made Jeff bolt up, stopping halfway, remembering the tube coming out of his arm. He'll be out by tomorrow, and then you two will be together again. Jeff's mother hugs him and says her goodbyes. The next couple of weeks were those where Jeff was visited by his family. Then came the day where his bandages were removed. His family were all there to see it, to what he would look like. The doctors unwrapped the bandages from Jeff's face. Everyone was on edge, on the edge of their seats. They waited until the last bandage holding the cover over his face was almost removed. Let's hope for the best, 
said the doctor. He quickly pulls the cloth, letting the rest fall from Jeff's face. Jeff's mother screams at the sight of his face. Leo and Jeff's dad stare awestruck at his face. What? What happened to my face? Jeff said. He rushed out of the bed and ran to the bathroom. He looked in the mirror and saw the cause of the distress. His face, it's... It's horrible. His lips were burnt to a deep shade of red. His face was turned into a pure white color and his hair singed from brown to black. He slowly put his hand over his face. It had sort of a leathery feel to it now. He looked back at his family, then back at the mirror. Jeff, said Leo, it's not that bad. Not that bad, said Jeff. It's perfect. His family were, was equally surprised. Jeff started laughing uncontrollably. Parents noticed that his left eye and hand were, were twitching. Uh, Jeff? Are you okay? Okay? I've never felt more happy. Look at me. His face goes perfect with me. He couldn't stop laughing. He stroked his face, feeling it, looking at it in the mirror. What caused this? Well, you may recall that when Jeff was fighting Randy, something in his mind, his sanity, snapped. Now he was left as a kill crazy killing machine. That is, his parents didn't know. Doctor, said Jeff's mom, is my son, you know, all right in the head? Oh, yes. This behavior is typical for patients that have taken a large amount of painkillers. If his behavior doesn't change in a few weeks, bring him back here, and we'll give him a psychological test. Oh, thank you. Jeff's mother went over to him. Jeff, sweetie, it's time to go. Jeff looks away from the mirror, his face still formed into a crazy smile. Mother took him by the shoulder and took him to get his clothes. This is what came in, said the lady at the desk. Jeff's mom looked down to see the black dress pants and white hoodie his son wore. Now they were clean of blood and now stitched together. Jeff's mother led him to his room, made him put his clothes on. Then they left, not knowing that this was the final day of their lives. Later that night, Jeff's mother woke to the sound to a sound coming from the bathroom. It sounded as if someone was crying. She slowly walked over to see what it was. When she walked into the bathroom, she saw a horrendous sight. Jeff had taken a knife and carved a smile into his cheeks. Jeff, what are you doing? Asked his mother. He looked over at her. I couldn't stop smiling, Mommy. It hurt after a while. Now I can smile forever. Jeff's mother noticed the ring, his eyes ringed in black. Jeff, your eyes! His eyes were seemingly never closing. I couldn't see my face. I got tired and my eyes started to close. I burned out the eyelids so I could forever see myself, my new face. Jeff's mother slowly started to back away, seeing that her son was going insane. What's wrong, mommy? Aren't I beautiful? Yes, son, she said. Yes, you are. Let me go get dad so he can see her face. She ran into the room and shook, shook the Jeff's dad from his sleep. Honey, get the gun. We. She stopped as soon as she saw Jeff in the doorway holding a knife. Mommy, you lying. That's the last thing they hear as Jeff rushes them with the knife, cutting both of them. His brother Leo woke up, startled by some noise. He didn't hear anything else, so he just shut his eyes and tried to go back to sleep. As he was on the border of slumber, he got the strangest feeling. It 
Someone was watching him. He looked up before Jeff's hand covered his mouth. He slowly raised the knife, ready to plunge it into Liu. Liu trashed here and there, trying to escape Jeff's grip. Shh, Jeff said. Just go to sleep. That was dog shit. That was dog shit. That was trash. <laughs> Mini Joker for real. The Joker moment. That was so bad. Holy shit. I remember... I remember Jeff the Killer not being, like, written that well. But like, god damn, man. God damn. No way was that bad. That's horrible. That was actually horrible. Bro, really... Bro really, like, murdered three kids, and, and the cops were like, ah, them kids, you know, kids doing kid things, you know, by the way, you know, your brother that we, um, we put in, uh, in, in juvie, yeah, he's, he's fine, the three kids that you literally murdered, nah, n nothing to it, water under the bridge. <laughs> Also, the kids pulling up to a kid's birthday party and fucking like with guns ready to blast him, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. <sighs> but that is okay, chat. Because now, we get to read my second favorite. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know if I would say that NES Godzilla or of nineteen ninety nine is more my favorite, but they're both really good. And I love them both. Hella love them both. So we shall be going from straight garbage to peak horror peak truly peak and again we will only be reading for a little bit uh and then we'll go look for somebody to raid because this is a this is a i think that this is definitely shorter than nes godzilla but it's still very long this is like it's a long one so we'll finish it next time The year is 1999. That sentence brings me back to my senior kindergarten class when I was five years old, where we used to read out the date on the blackboard every single day. The year 1999 exists as a stain in my mind. However, as a memory that will not go away no matter how hard I try to forget it. 1999 marked the year that I lost my first tooth, my first time on a plane, and unfortunately, the early loss of my childhood innocence. That one memory that refuses to be wiped it all starts with that new, or old, television. At that time, Pokemon was the latest fad to hit the school. Cards, games, stickers, and the most popular, the TV show. So, of course, every time I came home from school, I would stay glued to the TV 
until Pokemon came on at 5. The only problem was that my dad watched the news at 5.30, and Pokemon episodes were back to back, which meant I had to miss an episode every day, something that I wound whined on and on about. My dad got tired of hearing me complain every day. That must be why he went and bought another TV. My dad put the TV he bought in my room. Unfortunately, it was just an old small boob tube with rabbit ears even. It only had 20 channels available, not including the channel Pokemon was on. I recall I didn't care though. I was just thrilled I had my own TV in my own room. After surfing through the channels, I came to the conclusion that only Channel 2, TVO Kids, was worth watching, so I watched that for a while. It wasn't for another few months until I discovered Channel 21. One day in April, I was flipping through the channels, trying to see if Pokemon was on. I pressed Channel 21 into the remote, hoping that there were more channels, and to my del delight, there was. My dad was surprised too, but he let me watch it because it seemed to have kids' programs on. The channel was called Caledon Local 21, and I later found it was indeed broadcasted from the town of Caledon, Ontario, a, very a town very close to my city. The shows I saw on Caledon 21, Caledon Local 21, looked poorly made. And I never understood what was going on in them half the time. However, as I grew up, every time I thought of that channel, I realized more and more how messed up the shows and half shows were, and had to ask myself, what the fuck was I watching? The following is a list of shows and episodes I remember seeing on Caledon Local 21. How I remember such detail even disturbs me, but I guess. Things like this stand out in your mind for a while. The channel only ran a few shows, probably because it was only operational between 4pm and 9pm. April 1999 Mr. Bear Bear's Cellar Episode 12 Very sketchy name if you were to look at it nowadays. The show featured a guy wearing a bear mascot costume who would get a new visitor into a cellar every day. It was always a kid. The show was filmed with a camcorder, and not a very good one either. The police asked me a lot of questions about the show. The episode started with Mr. Bear sitting at a table, playing checkers by himself. He sat there playing for a bit until there was a knock on the door. The camera was then looking up at the step. Hi, Loyally. Hi. Hi, thank you for the raid, Loyally. Hi. Hi. Hi, Loyally. How was your cooking stream? What'd you cook? Oh, hello, gamers. Hello. You're reading my other favorite spooky story besides uh, NES Godzilla, which my stream has heard me chill endlessly throughout the night throughout nights that we were reading spooky stories. Hello, Loyally. Hello. How was your cooking stream? What did you cook? Cook chicken oh, congee with century egg? Ooh. I'm happy for you. Now you get to relax to spooky story. One of my favorites. It does sound really good. Have a good stream. Thank you so much for the rain. I'm gonna get through this. Uh, it's only some of it. I'm gonna read like maybe half of this and then I'm gonna call it for the night because this is a really long story. Um, so I'm gonna get back to it. I'm also gonna warn people in chat, the, the new people in chat, 
Uh, my OBS has recently been um, very functional. Uh, and it will cut out sometimes. I don't know why it does this. Uh, so if my stream turns off, like, mid-sentence, I'll, I'll come back in like 10-15 seconds. Just... I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Until I raid, I'm here. <laughs> but thank you again for the raid, Loli. Hope you have a good rest of your night. And you were the shout out? Yeah, thank you for the raid. I hope you enjoy it. Spooky. I lost my fucking place. Okay, I'm gonna start here. Because I was at the top of the line. Can't have OBS without BS for real, man. Can't be a Shimura stream without my OBS disconnecting for like at least two or three times a stream. <sighs> this episode started with Mr. Bear sitting at a table playing checkers by himself. He sat there playing for a bit until there was a knock on the door. The camera was done looking up at the stairs by the door where there was another knock. Mr. Bear climbed the stairs and opened the door to reveal two young mm -hmm. children. Shh. Meeting. Putting you on silent and being fucking loud. One was a boy about my age and the other was a girl who looked about eight. Mr. Bear danced in delight and then started talking to the kids. I couldn't hear any of them that well, I remember. He then led the kids into the cellar, which was quite dark, only lit by a small oil lamp on the table. I can't really remember that much more, except him singing a song which I couldn't hear too well either, probably because of that large bear mask. The episode ended with them playing hide and seek, with the kids hiding in a closet and Mr. Bear counting. Maine, 1999. Soup and Spoon. I don't even think this was even a show. I think it was more of a special movie thing. All I know is I stopped watching Caledon Local 21 for a while because I thought the show was too stupid, especially since Pokemon now came on at 4.30 and 5. I don't remember much of this, but it showed a can of soup and a spoon both attached to strings, swinging back and forth as if someone was holding them and dangling them in front of a camera. Interestingly enough, the show was shot in a basement, which looked just like the one used in Mr. Bear's cellar. Like I said, I can't remember much. The only thing I can remember clearly was the end. The entire thing was only half an hour, and just included stuff I found stupid such as the spoon chasing the soup around trying to eat him. The ending showed a table and about seven kids sitting around it, each with a bowl of soup in front of them. They were sitting and looking at a camera, but with confused, almost frightened looks. The cameraman then held a can of soup in front of the kids and said, Spoons ready? And then it just stopped. July 1999. It was summer, and I hadn't watched Channel 21 for a while, until one day when I slept over at a friend's house, and I decided to check it out again. My friend had gotten a TV in his room for his sixth birthday, so we stayed up very late. For us, 9.30 was very late, and watched TV. That's when I remembered Channel 21 and brought it up to my friend. We decided to see if it was on, and... To our surprise, it was. Mr. Bear's Cellar, Episode 23 This episode was entertaining for my friend and me, mainly because it had swearing. However, now that I think of this episode, I realized something was definitely wrong when it was filmed. The episode started with the camera on its side while it was facing Mr. Bear who was walking upstairs to the cellar door. The camera then blacked out for a second before fading in, back upright, and facing Mr. Bear. There was also another kid talking with him. 
but this kid looked about 11 or 12. He was talking to Mr. Bear for a while, but I couldn't hear well, again with the crappy camcorder, until the kid started raising his voice. The kid was saying how late it was, and his sister had to go home. You could also hear more voices in the background. I remember Mr. Bear clearly saying, get the fuck out, you're not invited, with a deep muffled voice, with a deep voice muffled by the bear mask. I remember my friend and I looking at each other and laughing at the mention of the forbidden F word. But the episode got weirder. The kid began climbing the stairs before turning around and saying he was going to call the police. Mr. Bear began breaking into a run towards the kid, who started screaming and running as well. The camera then cut out, and that was the very end of the episode. The channel then turned to static shortly after. August 1999. I didn't want to watch Channel 21 after that. In August, I grew more curious to see Mr. Bear's cellar for some reason, though. The last episode I saw of Mr. Bear was weird, it had some swearing, which also made me think the show was made for teenagers. But nonetheless, I flipped onto Channel 21 when my dad was busy. Mr. Bear's cellar. Episode 28. Apparently, this episode had been playing for the entire month of August. It was studied a lot by the police. The entire episode was just Mr. Bear sitting in a chair talking to the audience. Hello, kids. You want to visit my cellar? If you do, please write me at this. Please write me a letter at this address. The screen then switched to a white screen with multicolored letters reading the address, and that was what remained for the rest of the episode. This repeated for five hours every day until September came. And guess what I actually did? I did send Mr. Bear, or that sick bastard who betrayed him, a letter. I did it out of curiosity mostly. My dad was okay with it because he thought it was a legit kid's show. But then again, he never saw it, any of what was on Channel 21. So, I wrote a letter using my best handwriting possible. I think I just said how I wanted to meet Mr. Bear. So, my dad sent the letter to the address Mr. Bear sent on the show. It stayed on all day anyway for some reason. It took about a week to get a response which I was surprised it did. I still have the letter I received on August 15, 1999. Letter read, Dear Elliot, Thank you ever so much for your letter. I would love to have you come in- I would love to have you in my cellar. We play games, watch movies, and go fire camping out in the middle of the woods. Come to my house at the police cut out this address, Caledon, Ontario, Canada. I look very forward to having fun with you. Love, Mr. Bear. I cannot believe my dad did not find this sketchy because he actually took me to the house. And then that's when the police became involved. Those endless questions, those pictures of terrified kids, the woods. That brings me to why I'm writing this blog. That psycho and his friends did some fucked up shit back then, and it seems like he's trying to get into contact with me again. The entire police thing is back coming back. That has brought 1999 to me. Over a decade later, it is happening again. November 14th, 2009. People have been emailing me exactly asking what exactly happened in 1999. I will get to that. Those weird TV shows I was watching apparently were meant to attract kids to Mr. Bear's house. What Mr. Bear did shocked the entire town. My dad actually drove me to Caledon along with the address Mr. Bear left on the letter. 
The house was actually in the outskirts of town, in the open farmland. I still remember that house. It looked like an older farmhouse that looked to have been built in the early 1900s. The windows were all boarded up, and the house looked in a state of disrepair. As we walked up to the house, I remember my dad checking the address over and over again, and looking at the house. Oh, it's my 9 p.m. alarm. <laughs> looking at the house in disbelief. Then the door opened. I expected Mr. Bear to be at the door, but I was surprised to see a police officer emerge from the creaking doorway. The officer began talking to my dad, while I quickly asked if that was Mr. Bear's house. The officer's face cringed slightly and muttered, oh god, or something like that. He started talking quietly to my dad so I couldn't hear, although my dad told me to go to the car anyway. And then we just went home. My dad was quiet the whole way home. Well, I felt like something strange had happened. My dad never told me what happened for a while. I forgot about it anyway, too. Channel 21 no longer came on, and when I asked my dad about it, he would not acknowledge its, ex its existence. I think it was when I was 13 where I finally learned the truth. I remembered Channel 21 one day and asked my dad about it. I guess he decided that I should finally hear the truth. Caledon Local 21 was a local TV channel that ran from October 1997 to August 1999 in the Peel region of Ontario. The entire channel was made from a house in Caledon, the very one that I visited, and run by a man who was not really known by anyone in the town. The channel was only available to older TVs because the signal was one that was only picked up by rabbit ears, weaker frequency. The man created all the shows on the channel, all of which were kid shows. He was Mr. Bear, and he was the mysterious cameraman. The real reason he created the channel was more disturbing than what was originally thought. As you might have already guessed, he kidnapped kids and held them in his cellar. But while most people thought he was a serial child... Samantha set Bond to Harmon Smith when the lights are on. He really wanted to use the kids for another purpose. The day I arrived, the man fled his house the night before the day before the police went in for their investigation. I wasn't the only one who was watching. December 2nd, 2009. Sorry for not answering questions for so long. I haven't accessed my email account for some time. Anyway, let me finally set some things straight about what I know. Back in October, I visited the house previously owned by the man who ran Caledon Local 21. Two women lived there, operating a daycare, daycare business. How ironic. Now, to answer the questions you guys emailed me. Question. Who else watched Caledon 20, Local 21? Answer. I know other people watched it for sure, including those kids who wound up at Mr. Bear's house. After some Google searches, I found that a few people on the Neoseeker forums who were discussing shows from the Caledon Local 21 shows. They talked about the two shows I watched, but also another two shows I had never seen before. A user name, a user named I am real, I am real life seemed to know all the shows that were broadcasted on channel 21. Here are the two that I've never heard of. The Fallen Angel and Life. They described it as a fairly boring show about a guy rambling on and on in front of a camera about how he must please Satan and appease him before it is too late. Paint with a soul. I am real life and another user called Siggy92 were discussing the show. They described it as Blair Witch-like. It consisted of a cameraman wandering around a forest at night, doing nothing particularly interesting. 
I'll go looking for the conversation and see if I can get the link. Question. Where is Mr. Bear? Or the guy who wore the costume? Answer. If I did know, I would have said earlier. I have no idea where this guy is, or if he's dead, or alive. Hopefully done. When I see my dad's friend next time, I will ask him about this. It, maybe then I can get a more definite answer. Question. What did Mr. Bear do to the children? Answer. This is by far the most common question I've been asked. I found this out in October as well, via my dad's friend who is a retired Caledon regional officer. Apparently, the man playing Mr. Bear took the kids out of the house and into the forest nearby. What he did there, police are not exactly sure what happened, but 16 charred bodies of children between the age of 4 and 13 were found in a 15 by 15 foot ditch deep within the forest. My dad's friend didn't want to go into exact details, but I'm seeing him next Thursday anyway, so maybe I can extort more information from him then. That's all I have for now. Thanks for keeping an interest in my blog. I will try to gather as much information as I can for my next post. I've actually been getting pretty interested in this myself. It should be my right to know what the hell happened there. January 14, 2010. I'm sorry I haven't posted anything for a while. I've kind of lost interest with this blog since I hit a standstill while looking for more information about the identity of the owner of Kalanon Local 21. However, a few weeks ago, I struck gold. I found some answers, surprisingly, from the father of a kid I used to babysit. He lives just across from my street, and I used to look after his kids when they were younger. He currently doesn't have a job either. He used to live near the woods outside of Caledon and witnessed the owner's activities in the woods. His name is Anthony Poyo. When he lived in a small bungalow outside the woods, he would often venture in to smoke a joint of marijuana or two before returning to his work as a woods craftsman. Boyo described that sometimes he would hear voices of children coming from deeper within the woods, as well as a glowing light off in the distance. Boyo told me these events started in late 1997. Note, this was around the same time that Caledon Local 21 began airing. He apparently became annoyed by this happening every once in a while and actually went to investigate. Boyo then described what the whole scene looked like when he got there. There, were a group of, there was a group of kids, he said about 13 to 17, and ages 5 to 12 gathered around a large fire pit with a burning fire. With them was a single adult. Boyo talked to the man, noting his unusual, unkempt appearance of a crack addict, as well as constant twitching, and asked what he was doing out in the forest with children. The man said they were on a camping trip, something they did frequently. Boyo, not suspecting anything, as Caledon has one of the lowest crime rates in Canada, simply left it at that and told them to be quieter. Boyo then paused for a while, before telling me that they had never became quieter. In fact, sometimes he heard loud chanting from the children in an unknown language. He didn't bother meeting with the man again, as he was moving anyway. I told Poyo that the man was probably the owner of Caledon Local 21, but he doubted it, as he heard that the man was moving to Pickering by several other residents near that area. Here is what I know now. The man would take kids into the woods regularly for camping. The fire pit Poyo described may be the hole of the, the bodies of the children were found in. The children Poyo saw were probably the ones that were found dead. The man moved to a city called Pickering, a smaller city east of Toronto. I will discuss this with my dad's friend, the ex-cop, and see if this matches with anything the police knew about this man. I also want to know if he has any other knowledge of what was aired on Caledon Local 21. February 10th. 2010. <laughs> I 
hate that I know the place is being mentioned. This is why it, like... Okay, it's, it's not good in a it could have happened sense, but it's good in it, it is good in a it could have happened sense. Coming from Jeff the Killer, which was literally like kid's brother gets sent to Juvie, and then the kids who beat him up, he murders all three of them, and then the police is like water on in the bridge. Don't even worry about it, bro. Your brother? We let him free, bro. We know you didn't do it, bro. It's cool. It's chilling. It's chilling. And, and like, something this grounded in reality is fucking horrifying. <laughs> they def have their Canadian geography down, I'll say that. Yeah, I... Look, I'm an American. I don't even know fucking American geography, so... February 10th, 2010. Good news, guys. I talked to my dad's friend, and he disclosed a lot of information for me. First, I asked if the police had any information on the man who ran the channel. He replied that they only had the same lead for years and never found the subject. However, the Peel Regional Police do have some of the tapes found in the house Calon Local 21 was broadcasted from. He took me over so I could watch a few. I guess I haven't said much about him yet. My dad's friend is Mitchell Wilson, a pretty nice guy. He seems to understand my thirst for knowledge on what happened during the late 90s in that house. He feels it was wrong that my dad went so long without telling me much. He took me to the Davis Road Police Station. If you don't know it, it's the largest station in Caledon and one of the largest within the Peel region of itself. Each of the main stations around Peel have someone's tapes. I was able to watch all the footage that, Davis ha that the Davis Road Station has. Unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to take any tapes home for obvious reasons. Paint with Soul, Episode 10 Garbage Thrown Away Paint with Soul was one of the shows that I Am Real Life and Siggy92 discussed on Neoseeker. I told the police about this, and they informed me that 12 episodes of the show were made and broadcasted between December 1997 and January 8, 1998. Exactly as I Am Real Life and Siggy92 described, the episode opened with the cameraman wandering around in a forest. It appeared to be during the evening, as it seemed the sun was setting. The cameraman walked along a path until they got to an area where there was a lot of garbage lying in the leaves. The cameraman looked around at the various wrappers, bottles, bags, and boxes, making sure that each item got a few seconds of screen time. The camera then focused on a single area before the man spoke. I recall he spoke in a very timid, quiet voice, and I'd swear I'd heard it before, like on another Caledon Local 21 show. I could barely hear what he was saying, but he mainly talked about how us humans are garbage, or something that had to do with saving ourselves by cleaning up the garbage. Us. It actually sounded really stupid, but a feeling, but still, a feeling of dread came over me. I mean, that forest was possibly where the bodies were found, right? Mr. Bear's Cellar, Episode 25. When the police administrator brought this tape in, I actually said, oh shit, and chuckled a bit out loud. Of course, I got stares from the staff, but Wilson explained to them about my little experience with Mr. Bear and how I kept the letter he, st he sent me. Like the previous episodes, this one included a guy wearing a bear mask on costume. The episode began with Mr. Bear waddling over to the cellar door with a bottle of orange juice in his paws. On the ground were 16 shot glasses as well as a small bottle that contained an unknown liquid. Mr. Bear poured an equal amount of orange juice into each glass before opening the smaller bottle and depositing one drop into the glasses. He then went off camera. There, was some minor, there were some minor sh sounds such as shuffling and then he emerged from behind the camera's location. 
Following him were 16 children. Some looked as young as four, while others looked like they were practically teenagers. As children entered, the administrator commented that this is the only episode that showed all 16 victims. The kids all looked rather content, except for this one who had visible bruises on his face, and unlike the other kids, he had a more fearful expression. He also looked about 11 or 12, which caused me to recognize him. He was the kid who had asked about his sister and subsequently met an unknown fate at the end of episode 23. That one episode I watched during July 1999. When I told the administrator this, he confirmed it was the same kid. He was also featured in episode 24, an episode that only aired once at 3 p.m. in, Ju in, in July 1999. The police have still not found the tape. Mr. Bear then broke into song singing about citrus fruits and how good vitamin C was for you. I could barely hear the lyrics as they were muffled by the bear mask. The kids all drink their juice, the one from episode 23 doing it rather reluctantly. And the episode ends. After viewing the tapes in possession of the Davis Road police station, I'm satisfied, but only temporarily. I still want to know the full story. The police just keep giving me the same crap about the creator of Kalanon Local 21 being a fetishist. Child diddler, as well as an apparent cultist. I will sign off for now, get into university first, and then get information later. Hopefully, I will get back to this blog as soon as possible. Alright. I think that's a good spot to end. Um, I'm just gonna save... We are at this. Um, because this is where, like, stuff starts to pick up a little bit more. Because, like, this is all, you know, some backstory. Um... set up and all that and this is where like the investigation starts to lead somewhere and everything that happens after that and it's really fucking cool uh so we're gonna end there we'll leave the rest for saturday i think i'm doing the reading yeah 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 so saturday so we will finish 1999 saturday and then we'll probably i'll read one more I'll try to find one more shitty story to balance it out. Because I feel like we've read a lot of really good stories and we barely read any bad ones. <laughs> so let's see who is live today. Always, as always, the struggle is finding people who are live that I would like to raid at this hour. Oh, Doll is live. Couldn't could raid Doll. I think I'm gonna raid Doll. I haven't raided Doll yet, I don't think. On my own, at least. Might she someone I mod for is online? Ooh. I think I'm gonna raid doll. Maybe if they're if they're live um Saturday at this hour, then uh, I'll raid them. But I haven't raided doll yet. Oh okay. I've raided doll, but it was with collapse. So this is like it's different. You know, it's different. Say hi to doll by myself. Uh so we're gonna raid doll. I will see y'all tomorrow, 3 p.m. for Lay lay zombie with the funny with the funny people, and then sa uh, Saturday I'm gonna try to finish Dead Space. Uh, and if not, you know, I don't mind finishing it in November. And then we can finish 1999, and I'll find shitty spooky stories. 
after that to balance everything out. So y'all have a good one. Thank you for hanging out tonight. And say hello to fellow crackhead the dolphin. Bye!